Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're going to look at the very two common forms of sharpening which are offered to you here and as the way you can do it in a dynamic way is you can use the high pass filter and the unsharp mask. Two very common. Unsharp mask, the funny name, comes from when it was done in the dark room with glass plates and things and a high pass is a bit later but both work by the principle that if you blur something that if something is already blurred it won't change much but if there's an edge on it edges will blur a lot more so you're using that factor so let's have a look at this and what i'm going to do with this is I'm going to hit ctrl j twice the top one i'm going to call high hp for high pass and the middle one going to be uh, USM for unsharp mask and so we'll start off here for this by the way if you go up to assistant manager there make sure that adding filter layer to selection is add filter as child layer there so that it adds it in underneath it applies just to that pixel layer so now if I go here and put in a high pass it comes out as a child there you can always drag it if you've got it somewhere else of course so what we're going to do to this well let's just turn this off for the moment because i just want to zoom into something here so we'll just, let's zoom into the top of this car here so you can see something of how it works at this level the reason i chose this picture is because this is a fairly soft edges and you can zoom in and still see what it is so when i turn this on if i turn up the radius here you're starting to get here most things are gray and the general principle is anything that's grey will not be sharpened. Anything not grey is going to get some sharpening. So as I turn this up here, I'm getting a lot of colour appearing through. And you can see the effect in quite a few places here. Because there's a lot of different contrasts across the areas here. It's not sort of a clean edge as such. So what we do with this then is if I go to the blend mode here. And I'm going to put in something like one of these here so overlay all the way down to typically linear light so linear light is the strongest effect and of these soft light is the least strong but i will typically use linear light and then i'll turn down the opacity to weaken the effect radius i will typically keep that to one you can change this by the way just roll your mouse wheel over the number there to change it one at a time hold down control key or left control key for 0.1 at a time so you can see this effect i deliberately haven't um, smoothed anything out here denoising so you can see the way that the sharpening affects other areas as well so because this is a bit noisy there's a bit of differences between each pixel you get the sharpening effect appearing everywhere high pass is quite simple to use because you simply set the blend mode typically linear light play with the radius so it's just a single sharpening control and then you can then uh, handle that as, as you want so that, that's pretty straightforward if i'm going to go up to just the top of the hill here because this gives a nice clear edge here you can see the effect that if i increase the radius past one you can see here i'm getting this here which is the halo effect so if i go control zero to go out you can see that white line appearing around that and everything else appearing rather unnatural and so typically you go down here till you can't see anything and i will also go into an edge to have a look at that side that you can still see the effect there which is why i will often just do this at once so as a very quick way of sharpening it works well simply to do this what happens as well with it is if i just go down to around here and zoom into this area here let's just bring this across so i can see it a bit more there we go so what happens as well is if i just put this back to the original normal layer here as I turn up the radius here, I start to get colour in here. Now, if I put this onto a blend mode down here, which is on the contrast modes, it's going to create more contrast, so it's going to look different. So I put on linear light and I turn this on and off. You can see you're getting more contrasty picture. And that's because this is a contrast blend mode and colour is coming through. 
you can stop that effect by clicking on the monochrome here because that makes let's go back to show that normal here so this keeps this gray so rather than there we've got color this keeps this gray and that stops that color change effect so there we go that's what you get and let's leave this down at just one pixel for now because we'll have a look at this with the unsharp mask turn off that top layer so we're now working with this layer so I now go to the unsharp mask it's a little bit more complex and it does confuse people more doing this so here again turn up the radius to about one pixel and that's usually okay uh, if you turn the radius up higher you'll then start to get the rather unnatural effects appearing which you can do if you want to you can turn that right up and play down here just to, as an adjust the factor as an adjustment so but normally I'll turn that down to one and then use the factor as an adjustment so I turn that up to where it looks like but what happens with the factor is in particular if you look at this look at the way that the pixelation is happening let's go to the edge here to see this more clearly as I turn the factor up then it's sharpening every pixel here so you're getting local effects which you may want if you've got some texture you want to bring out the contrast within the texture the threshold here can be used to stop it doing at the very when the colors are pretty close together but you need this very small changes so I'll roll that one to one and you can see that it's already controlling that quite a lot however you but what it means you get some which are threshold controlled and some which are not so you get this odd looking pixelation effect so even if you bring this down a bit here so this is down to 111 which can be quite a useful thing sometimes but you start to see where along the edges here I've got this pixelation but it suddenly drops off as you go into other areas and particularly if you, you turn this up and you're, you're going to get other effects like that so you, you can see this as well again the radius here turns up and you can very soon get to that halo effect so typically as a default here I'll start with one and one and zero if it's a bit noisy I'll try denoising beforehand or I will try the threshold a bit but I'm very very cautious about using the threshold you can also use sometimes a two two and two so that's got the edge a bit sharper but you can come out here and look at the effect zoom out a bit and see whether that looks okay this was on a fairly soft picture deliberately to see the effects let's have a look now at using a picture which is not so soft which is pretty sharp so I'll hit Control J twice on this go to HP high pass there and USM there for unsharp mask and we'll zoom in to this area here so you can see some fairly sharp edges and if I go to the high pass put in a high pass filter there turn the radius up to one and what I've noticed first of all is the clear edges because it's a sharp picture and there's no color in it in fact I can turn this up a bit even more and the edge is being affected here but again there's nothing here around the year of terms of color which means if you put the monochrome on it's not going to make a great deal of difference but it's often a good idea to put it on anyway so I do that by default and then when you put it on to linear light you get the actual sharpening effect which here is very clear so I will often use a high pass filter where I've got a fairly clear edge and I just want to crunch it up a little bit more so and I might play with the linear light but then I'll control it mostly with adjusting the opacity but mostly the, the radius again I will leave at one so it's again a very quick way of taking a picture which is quite sharp and adding a little bit sharp more sharpness to it I want to go to unsharp mask on this here then again let's put up the radius to one so we're getting an effect here now we'll turn up the factor and as I turn the factor up look at the detail that starts to appear down here probably don't want that 
So you can try the threshold, see whether that will get rid of that unwanted detail. And it does pull it back a bit. So it's actually not bad, but you can get the odd flecked bit like this as well. So be careful of this. I would turn up the factor to where it's a little bit past where there's too much detail appearing. Pull it back a bit so it's more acceptable. Then I'll go back to radius and try making a few changes there. But often that doesn't work there. So one and one is often a fairly good one here. Try one, one, one on a sharp picture and you're going to get an effect that goes from this to this. You might not see a lot because the threshold's taken off, so we'll take that off. So just one and one, and it goes from this to this. That's a bit better. You can also try two and two, or two and one, or one and two, and then adjust, make minor adjustments. Threshold here, if I turn that up to one, it's taken some of that edge off there. It's a little looking pretty good. And I could even do a two. That's not too bad. Let's see before and after before and after. Yeah, that's even better. So then here, 222 two, two may well work. So anyway, there we go. There's looking at sharp pictures, looking at lots of sharp pictures, sharp pictures and the other sharp pictures for a quick tweak. I'll use high pass. If I want to play around a bit more and adjust things, I'll go to the unsharp. I'll set the radius to about one. Try playing with the factor. Then move the threshold one or two, maybe you know, often I'll leave it at zero. In terms of the pictures you use, then you can use typically the high pass filter is often used more for landscape, just in general use. I've seen it used more for landscape, while the unsharp mask is used for things more like portraits and perhaps when you're photographing things like flowers and, and so on. So anyway, that's it. That's a fairly detailed run through of talking about it and showing it the difference between high pass and unsharp. Both good sharpening methods and just understand what's happening, use it appropriately and you'll get really good results. You can, of course, do other things like adding masking to it. I've not recovered that here because I talk about that elsewhere. And of course, that's a very useful way of augmenting it and adding sharpening where it's needed, not necessarily everywhere. But it anyway, and thank you very much for watching.